Okay, this is my tiller, tipped up on a slant, on an angle, and I want you to be able to look at at the, uh, the this assembly right here. This, when I got this, it never had a drag bar, so I made up this drag bar today, and it's the only part of the rotor pillar that's got nice paint on it, eh? We're going to shove this into here like that. I don't care if it's scratched because the rest of the rotor tiller is in pretty poor condition paint wise. And and typical me, right? The paint's still wet while I'm doing this. Now, if you want the uh, bar to go down, you place the pin in that position so it can't come up. And if you want to push the tiller around the yard so this isn't dragging, the point's not dragging down, you put it up. So let's put it in the up position first. I've only got two hands. I need another one coming out of my forehead, eh? There. So at that position, you can push it around the yard. Barely, right? down there. Can you see my hand there? Nope. There. And then if you want to raise it up, oh that's till height. And then to raise it up or down or whatever you want to consider, you put it on top of those guys. And now you're tilling. Right here. Cool, eh? So I'm going to put it back because I'm going to push it into the garden. And some people say you should leave the wheels on and other guys say you should leave the wheels off. But at my age, uh, what am I doing? At my age, one less piece of vibration shared by the wheels is a good thing. So there. I kind of came up with the dimensions for it myself and I welded it too. Right there, all four sides. Thanks. So there it is facing up. After I was done with it, I just turn it around and have it facing up. And you can push this little guy anywhere you want. I'd say it's a success. And the paint matches because I've kind of used it before it's set up. Uh, oops, excuse me. And there it is. Most of the leaves are being composted as we speak. I know it's early, but uh, the uh, garden is full of earthworms already. That's pretty cool, eh? I'm pushing it this year. Last year I we had, or was it the year before, we had the what they call a heat dome, and it just cooked my soil. There was no earthworms in it. Uh, it wasn't happy. And then last year I worked at it and added organic material, and this year I've worked at it. And as long as I can keep it moist and keep it from being baked, we should have a we should have a good a really good. A really good little garden here. Yes, and I'm starting to bring out the green and yellow stuff too. That's the 180. All right, this is for Klaus and all you other guys that are interested. This is the fertilizer that I've been using. It's much smaller in granular size than the old stuff. Remember the old white stuff that was about an eighth of an inch? And my my spreader is I think designed for the old stuff. The old stuff used to say 10, you'd run it on 10 and it would be a, a guess, right? Now it squirts out like crazy at around six. So I just have to be careful. So this was one bag to cover 800 square meters and the front's about 200, not quite. So I put a third of it on the front. I have just done one coat on the back. Uh, I do a crisscross, you can kind of see the lines. 
and uh, now I'm gonna just crisscross the other way and I go till I run out because I do have two bags of this one more for uh, July or August so we'll keep an eye on it for you Klaus and others that are interested so I don't know if I noticed if I showed you in the last video but this has been overseeded with grass now just in the in the kill spots it's really not killed it's like a over fertilization or something like that and it's different the soil is different everywhere like look at over there there was no salt or anything over there the grass is quite poor right now I would rate it a D okay we're planting potatoes Mrs. P is throwing them in and I'm digging them we just take one shovel here and put it there the next one goes in there step on it a little bit and it's hard to do with one arm. Yeah, I think you're winging all over the place. There you go. And that's it, guys. Okay, there we go, my friends. There's my uh, garden. It's coming along. There's the potatoes. The corn is about a foot tall. I promised Klaus I would do this, but it's... Uh, very hard to do. <laughs> Harder to do than I thought. So let's just go over to the other side now. Okay, the shadows are already creeping in. There's my beans. They look great. My onions. And the peas. I just thought I'd add it to the garden file. Might play it in the fall. Thanks. So it's a, it's about the seventh of June. There's my tomatoes. Glad's back there. Petunias. Spinach. I think that's kohlrabi, beets, and turnips. I'm not sure which one's which. Oh, it's in my shadow, sorry. Lettuce, I think. Hard to tell. And then here's the, there's the carrots coming up there, if you can see them. starting to come. They always scare me. They're not coming up. Thanks. And here's the yard. It's just been mowed. I have to water it. We haven't had any rain for two, three weeks now. The apple tree's looking good, huh? And the old poplar. Look up. Way up. So Kenny, that's the back fence, and then the other side of that fence is the alley. <laughs> Hi guys, Bruce here. Yes, we're at mid-season in the garden. The potatoes are right there. My apple tree is doing great. there. They're about an inch and a half across right now. They're going to get to about two and a half to three inches across. Fun, huh? There's the corn. It's doing really well. One second. There it is there. It's about two to two and a half feet tall. I hope it gets to be six foot tall. I love tall corn, eh? And then just to the left of that are the peas. We'll just head over there. 
and I knew we were getting close. Only five or six pods in there, but or peas in there. That's cool. And I knew that these were going to be shorter peas than last year. Look at those onions, man. Three rows. And then the beans. And they're beautiful. We have beans too. Should be one on the end here. Oh, they're just flowering. Excuse me for stepping in front of you there. Let's go look at the apples. There they are. So they're about well, got about two months left to go on those. And then my tomatoes and my small uh, salad bed. And they're actually okay, you know. We have to consider that it's either been really, really hot or very, very cool. Down here are the carrots. The soil looks a bit like clay right now, that's just because we I haven't hoed it or I haven't been uh, maintaining the soil for a couple of weeks just because there's no weeds. So anyway, that was a quick shot of the garden. Thanks a lot. Alright, so that's what it looks clipped and trimmed. Thanks to Mrs. P mostly, eh? I sit on the tractor and do a bit of weed whacking. So Oh, there's evidence of me right there. Backyard. I believe that's Jacob's Ladder. Lilies, poppies, potentella. Oh, and a green tractor. Got to go put the cover on that. Hey, I got my stripes. Thank you, everybody. Short one today. Here's just a short clip of what my dear my dear wife and I accomplished today. Those are red and white onions. I left one kind of unclean so you can get an idea of what they looked like before I started. And uh, yeah, those onions down there were wild onions in with the potato. Well, not wild. They were volunteer from last year's potatoes. That's where the potatoes were put in the onion spot this year. And look at those green scallions, green onions, whatever you want to call them, beets, carrots, and then cleaned onions. We like to, well I like to clean the onion because it's a lot easier for the cook. When they take out a crunchy old onion like that one there, or if they reach into the onion bag and pull out a nice clean onion that's only got a light dried skin on it, these, like I said, these will dry with a light skin and then they'll they'll preserve themselves for months. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Thanks everybody. Well, hello there my friends. Yes, we're getting ready for winter. I just wanted to let you know that this garden is is about 260 to 280 square feet. It doesn't look that big though because that sidewalk uh, bisects it into two. But uh, I tell you, when you're down on your hands and knees planting, it feels more like 260 square feet. Autumn's coming. It's here. And yes, I'm using the old stalwart again. It ran well. These are the marigolds. It almost looks like the, uh, the darker 
reddish ones are going to seed faster than the orange ones. So there, that was all, that's all by seed from last year. And then underneath that ugly little pile of sheets and, and, and sticks is our cucumbers. And they're still hanging in there, so we're covering them up. We've had two killer frosts. But I'll show you, because it's up on the south side of the house, I'll head over there right now. Yeah, so here's my nasturtiums. And they have gone berserk. And all of these were done by seed. Ken from Ken Small Engines, he was, um, he was, he was asking me about these and he planted his own. But look at this, they're coming out to cover up half the step. And I haven't watered them for about two weeks either, they're just on their own. So I'll take a little movie of this. These are only got a couple of days to go and I'll yank them out. Thank you. And just look at our little Manching cherry or Manching, it's something like that. It has done great. I can't reach the top anymore. When we planted it, when we planted it, it was just a twig. There you go. The rain barrels are going to have to be drained or they would freeze solid and split. I got one other one on the front side of the house. This one's also on the front side, just inside the gate. And I've got one by the back gate to the alley by the garage. So this is where the, all the action happens out back here. The gate's locked and the alley is actually two feet lower than the yard. So it's a really high fence for Mr. Scum and Mr. Bag to hop over, but some of them, sometimes they do. So anyway, that's the rain barrel and the green compost bin. We have so much foliage around here that I have my own compost bin and then we have this green takeaway compost bin from the city and sometimes it's pretty handy this time of year. Okay, these are all clay pots. We're slowly converting to plastic just from weight, eh? And they're slowly deteriorating too. Look at that one there. It's falling apart. But what I wanted to show you was my poor wife emptied them all by hand without my help here. There's the pile. You can see the root balls from each pot. And we didn't use up all our soil this year. So we'll just use that next year. That'll get thrown in the shed. Not thrown in the shed, put in the shed before the dead of winter. Okay guys, you don't have to see the rest of the uglies. Thanks for watching. So these two gardens are along with the 200 and, or yeah the 260 square feet out there plus there's oh I'm guessing another 60 square feet 80 square feet back there and another 100 square feet here up and around the corner so we've got almost 500 square feet of garden which is half of a small house it's perfect all right, my friends, these are my nasturtiums. They're from my own seed from last year. Uh, there was about 14 that's, that uh, germinated well, and that's the result of 14 nasturtium plants. There's actually, if you can tell, there's a brick wall under there. I'll come back, just like the other side of the step over there. There's a wall just like that all along here. That's amazing, eh? So anyway, we're going to tear these out. I'll be back when they're down. They're not that hard to tear out, but they're... Okay, the problem is, is that they're full of water. So if we let them freeze, they're going to, it's going to be like taking out 500 pounds of wet celery. But if we do it today, it'll be about 150 pounds of dry nasturtiums. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. I'm guessing on those numbers, right? So thank you, anyway, thanks a lot, and we'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, here we are right beside the step. And we've got another burrowing critter. And that's about the size of my last wasp nest. But there's no wasps coming in there. Maybe they've all gone to bed for the winter. So we're going to pour some more detergent in there. Put another 40 gallons of water in there and then some dirt. Which worked last time. 
So anyway, here we're get we're coming along on the on the uh, nasturtium harvest. There's the seeds that they look like dried peas, eh? And then the ones that that aren't ripe yet are like this one here. But anyway, I think we got we got critters living in that hole. Thanks. Hello, guys. That's a pretty big hole. It might go right under the steps. Yeah, who knows? Let's water our little tree. No metaphor intended. So I got my nasturtiums out. Looks really good. And this is P. Mo Delon. Did a beautiful job. And that's what it looks like when there's nothing there. And that's something, huh? And I don't know if you've noticed, but we have the nice cladding on the trim on the house now. And soffit fascia too. Thanks. Okay folks, look at this one. We only have a few more days where these leaves are going to be on this old poplar tree. Isn't that something? The sun is right off in the west over there. And every leaf is almost fluorescent, eh? Isn't that something? And then the other five poplars that we planted earlier are doing, are, are, are okay. But this is just one's just beautiful, eh? my friends I got most of it done I got a little bit of cleaning up to do with the snow shovel but this guy has moved a lot of snow let's just go look at the alley so I moved it out past the neighbors and I for the neighbors recycle boxes I did that too and so that mrs. P and I can get in and out oh look at that my ramp There we go. Sorry about that. Back to filming. There's the alley. Like I said, I got a little bit of cleanup to do with the shovel. We'll take that with us. See, it's already starting to melt in the sun. It's minus 5 Celsius, which is 22 Fahrenheit, but it's melting in the sun. Oh, and I cut, I cut a path to the men's room, and then I cut a path I'll go slower to the shed to the house I did that with the shovel on the deck I didn't want to wreck the deck there's my shovel that I hate let's just do a little look out front see and I'm cutting also a couple feet extra Well, that's nice, it's already melting. 